Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Eduardo Duque, and I will talk about the zero cohesion between cement particles. Well, this is the outlook of this presentation. I will start with a brief introduction about what we have studied, and I'll give you some details about the simulation that we carry out. Then we'll move on the results and discussion section, and finally, I'll summarize the main results and conclusions of this work. As you may know, the calcium silicate hydrate, or CSA gel, is the main component of cement paste and responsible for most of the final properties of the material, including the mechanical performance. Nanoparticle paste simulation have shown that collective rearrangement of multiple uh, CSA nanounits produce a stress relaxation, controlling in this way the viscous uh, behavior, grit deformations, and thus uh, the main modes of mechanical degradation of these materials. As can be seen in the schematic picture of the CSA gel nanostructure, the CSA nanounits are randomly oriented and aggregated. This results in a wide variety of interfaces between nanoparticles, being possible to find tighter and looser contact. The triggering of the rearrangement that produces stress relaxation is then controlled by the interfacial cohesion between adjacent uh, CSA nanounits. In this work, we analyzed the interfacial cohesion as the controlling feature for nanoscale uh, rearrangement, prompting the mechanical degradation of cementitious materials. To this effect, we built different model interfaces, ranging from perfect contact, which is considered to be identical to the interlayer of bulk CS8, to progressively looser contact by widening the interfacial space. Here you can see the initial structure of the CS8 model which uh, was built taking as a starting point the crystalline st structure of tobermorite 11 Armstrong. The chemistry was modified to reach a calcium to silicon ratio of 1.65, following the procedure described by Kobasevic and co-workers. Then, the CSH model was equilibrated using uh, the reacted force field REXFE, which has demonstrated to reproduce accurately the structure, elastic properties and chemical reaction in calcium silicates. This equilibration has been performed in the isobaric isothermal ensemble for 1 nanosecond at room conditions, 300 Kelvin and 1 atmosphere. The simulation time is enough to reach a constant value of the water density in the interfacial space between silicate layers. And the final structure that we have obtained is in good agreement with experimental values, with a mean change length of about 3.1, an overall density of 3.35 gram per cubic centimeter, and an average basal distance of 1.25 nanometers. To study the role of the interface in zero stress relaxation, we have created a split force by inserting extra space in the central perfect contact interface up to 1 nanometer. The interfacial space is saturated with water up to reach the bulk water density and the system are equilibrated again in the isobaric isothermal ensemble for 2 nanoseconds at room conditions. The different interfacial models will here and after be referred to us by the value of the expansion of the interfacial distance instead of uh, the effective interfacial distance. In this way, the perfect contact interface has a value of 0 nanometers, while uh, the wider interface distance will be referred to as 1 nanometer. Finally, we applied a zero strain to the plane YZ, perpendicular to the interfacial layers, as indicated by the arrows. In contrast to previous works, in which quasi-static deformation schemes were employed and the entropic effect were ignored, in our work we perform non-equilibrium molecular dynamics, enabling us to model diffusion and temperature effects, features that may significantly affect the cohesion under zero strain. The zero deformations were done in the canonical ensemble at room temperature. Now we move to the next section, in which I will show you the main results that we have obtained in this work. We first analyze the effect of nanoconfinement on the structure of water by computing the density profiles of water molecules in the perpendicular direction to the silicate layers. In this plot, the water density of water molecules is only zoned for three expand interfacial distances. In all the system, there are two small peaks of local water density immediately onto the surface. These peaks correspond to water molecules strongly attached to the CSH due to the presence of surface defects. Moving toward the center of the interfacial space, we can see that there are a variable number of larger density peaks, from 2 to 4 depending on the interfacial distance. 
at an interfacial distance of about uh, 0.3 nanometers, there is a transition between two and three water layers, whereas the transition between three and four layers occurs about 0.75 nanometers. We analyzed the series strength of the simulate system and we found that for the perfect contact interface, the maximum series strength is about 0.73 gigapascal, as shown in this plot. This value is significantly smaller than the series strength computed in previous works for bulk CSH, in which uh, the values were between 2 and 3 gigapascal. However, this literature work used quasi-static deformation schemes, ignoring the entropic effect, whereas in our simulations we have carried out at room temperature. In that, when temperature is disregarded and we use a quasi-static deformation protocol, the predicted strength becomes 2.7 GPa for the perfect contact interface, which is in the line with previous results from the literature. However, we believe that our simulation at finite temperature are more realistic, and indeed, the value of the series strength is more consistent with the cohesion calculate from nano-indentation experiments, with values of about 0.33 GPa. If we represent the maximum zero strength as a function of the expansion of the interfacial space, we obtain this plot, in which we can see that the zero strength draws to very low values approximately when every layer of water turns into a tree layer, at around 0.3 nanometers. We have also computed the zero strain energy of the systems, which is the energy increase associated with the deformation, and it can be seen as the energy barrier necessary to overcome to deform the system beyond the ultimate strength point. And it can be seen that the energy barrier decreases more subtly than the zero strength as uh, the interfacial distance decreases. These plots suggest that the cohesion between uh, CSH nanoparticles and their zero, and their zero strain is lost at interfacial distance larger than 0 0.3 nanometers. To analyze the mechanism by which the stress relaxes in CSH, we have computed the spatial distribution of local strain when the sample were subject to shear strain. In this slice, it is shown the spatial distribution of local shear strain at 15% average shear strain. The atoms that undergo largest deformations are shown in light colors. Dark colors correspond to less deformed atoms. And in these figures, you can see that the maximum strain is concentrated in the interfacial space region where water resides. For small interfacial distances, such as the perfect contact interface, the atom within the CSH layers also display significant local deformation and participate in the relaxation mechanism. However, for larger interfaces, the stress relaxation occurs via deformation in the interlaminar space, while the local deformation is not developed inside the CSH layers. This is because the formations in CSH layers involve distortion of rupture of covalent bonds, which require higher energy than the distortion of the cohesive electrostatic and dispersive forces in the interlaminar space. As a result, CSH relaxation under shear is sustained by layers sliding over each other in a so-called steep slick relaxation mechanism. Therefore, the interfacial distance and the water content play a central role in the cohesion and consequently in the mechanical performance under shear strain. For that reason, we have studied the water properties as a function of the interfacial distance. The analysis of the hydrogen bond network reveals that as the, as the interfacial distance increases, the number of hydrogen bonds per molecule between water molecules and the CSA decreases, while increasing the number of hydrogen bonds between water molecules due to the larger water content in wider interfaces. Thus, the total number of hydrogen bonds per water molecule increases from 1.7 to 2.5, as you can see in the red line. Nevertheless, this is, there is no relevant change in the number of hydrogen bonds around the transition distance, 0.3 nanometers. We have also determined the diffusion coefficient of water molecules as a function of the interfacial distances, as you can see in the right plot. The diffusivity of water molecules is very low below 0.3 nanometers, but above that distance, water begins to flow and the average division coefficient increases linearly within the facial distances. This change of diffusivity at 0.3 nanometer coincides with the loss of cohesion and the interfacial distance at which the layer evolved to a water tree layer. Therefore, we can attribute this behavior to the water molecules that are not longer tightly coordinated to the CSH surface 
and start to behave like in bulk water, displaying increased diffusivity and causing the sharp reduction in shear strength and energy barrier. To test the hypothesis that the interfacial water mobility may be the controlling factor for shear cohesion in GSH, we performed some simple simulations for measuring the shear strength as a function of water mobility alone, without modifying neither the water content nor the interfacial distances. In particular, water mobility can be altered via two parameters, temperature and electrostatic confinement. We first analyze the impact of uh, temperature-induced water mobility on shear cohesion by computer the shear strength and the diffusion coefficients at different temperatures, from 100 Kelvin to 400 Kelvin. In this slide, uh, the diffusion coefficient of water are summed as a function of the temperature for the system with an interfacial distance of 0.2 nanometers. It can be seen that the higher the temperature, the higher the diffusion coefficients but two regimes can be distinguished. Below 300 Kelvin, water diffusion increases very slightly with temperature, while above 300 Kelvin, there is a sharp increase in the diffusivity. That means that water begins to flow at 300 Kelvin. Looking at the right plot, in which we can see the evolution of the shear strength with temperature, we also found a transition between two different regimes at 300 Kelvin. Below this temperature, the shear strength decreases progressively as the temperature increases, but at higher temperature, when water starts to flow, the shear strength remains almost constant around a minimum value of 0 0.15 gigapascals. The second strategy to alter the mobility of water is by changing its electrostatic confinement. For that purpose, we have added a variable amount of calcium hydroxide, reaching concentrations in the interface between 7.8 molar to 14.9 molar. In this plot, we can see the evolution of water diffusivity with the calcium concentration, finding that the diffusivity decreases as the concentration rises. This is because, uh, in presence of free ions, water molecules tend to coordinate those ions forming hydration spheres. These hydration spheres move as a wall and their diffusivity in nanoconfined species is hindered, reducing the effective diffusivity of water molecules. Moreover, the orientation of water molecules in those hydration cells can induce long-range order in other water molecules at distances greater than 1 nanometers, which reduces the diffusivity of water molecules that are located farther away from those ions. The decrease of the water mobility at high calcium concentration results in increased shear strength, as can be seen in the right plot. Indeed, shear strength crisis one of the magnitude rich in shear cohesion similar to that of systems with much smaller slit pores, highlighting the impact of interlayer ion concentration may have on the long-term performance of the material. The fourth, water mobility, seems to be the controlling factor for shear cohesion in CSH. So, in this work, we have investigated the relaxation mechanism of CSH nanoparticles under shear stress as a function of the interfacial distance by performing molecular dynamic simulations. The main conclusions are summarized in these slides. We first uh, found that the shear strength and the energy barrier to deformation decreases drastically as the interfacial distances increases, see, suggesting that the cohesion between particles and the shear is lost at interfacial distances larger than 0.3 nanometers. Well, the analysis of the spatial distribution of local shear strain so that the interface is responsible for stress dissipation, whereas uh, CSH layer do not participate in relaxation, indicating that relaxation takes place by sliding the layers over each other in a so-called steep slick relaxation mechanism. Thus, uh, the cohesion between layers is related to the interfacial distance and its water content. The analysis of water properties so that water begins to flow at interfacial distances above 0.3 nanometer, matching with the transition from water bilayer to water trilayer, suggesting that water mobility is the origin of uh, the shear strength. This hypothesis was validated by varying the water mobility, modifying only the temperature or the electrostatic confinement. In both cases, as soon as water begins to flow, the shear strength and energy barrier reach very low values. Thank you for your attention.